हेलो फ्रेंड्स वेलकम टू ई पाठशाला आई एम शगुन शर्मा आई एम असिस्टेंट प्रोफेसर इन पॉलिटिकल साइंस इन गवर्नमेंट कॉलेज फॉर गर्ल्स सेक्टर 42 चंडीगढ़ द पेपर इज फॉरेन पॉलिसी ऑफ इंडिया एंड द मॉड्यूल आई विल बी डिस्कसिंग टुडे इज डिटर्मिनेंट्स ऑफ फॉरेन पॉलिसी ऑफ इंडिया द फॉरेन पॉलिसी ऑफ इंडिया इज अफेक्टेड बाय सर्टन इंटरनल एज वेल एज एक्सटर्नल फैक्टर्स internal factors are like domestic factors geography economy leadership etc whereas external factors are general global environment and regional environment the determinants of foreign policy are always engaged in an interplay among themselves while we cannot say which factor is more important because it depends on situation which particular factor is playing an important role so we cannot generalize these determinants in indian foreign policy but each determinant somehow play an important role according to the situation the name of the module is india's foreign policy and its determinants <laughs> this module will make the readers aware about the determining factors of india's foreign policy foreign policy of a nation is decided by various internal external human and non human factors and india is no exception in that case the present module will evaluate all those determining factors of india's foreign policy in detail only after the correct and logical evaluation of these factors a nation can formulate a meaningful and effective foreign policy This module will comprise the evaluation of all the important factors like geography, economy, polity, domestic environment, military capability, leadership, international environment, etc. Determinants of India's foreign policy. The determinants of India's foreign policy or any other nation can be divided mainly into two classes: internal factors and external factors. And India is no exception for this classification. India's foreign policy is influenced by these two classes of determinants which are as follows: internal factors, geography. Geography has always been an important factor among the internal determinants of foreign policy. Even according to some scholars, this factor influences the main activities of a nation. In contemporary context, it can be said that geography in itself is not helpful or contrary factor but human beings may take its benefit through its activities geography plays an important role in formulation of india's foreign policy size topography boundaries population climate temperature water resources soil etc all are included in geography but in indian context mainly three factors geographical position size and boundaries are prominent to show its influence india's geographical position provides it an important place in international and regional context but at the same time creates a sense of insecurity also in the north mountain range like himalaya and in the south indian ocean makes india strategically insecure india's geographical position has influenced it from ancient to the modern period in ancient period india on the one hand has to face attacks through khyber pass in northwest and simultaneously on the other hand it succeeded in expanding its culture and religion in tibet china mongolia sri lanka and southeast asia without fighting any war in the medieval period due to the same reasons it had to face invaders in northwest and consequently the whole subcontinent slipped into the grip of islam in the modern times due to insecure sea routes india had to struggle against various european imperialistic powers and finally india falls under the british empire and remained a colony for around 200 years even after the world war 2 it got trapped in military alliances due to cold war politics of america and soviet union 
The size of a country also plays an important role in determination of its foreign policy. Its larger size has helped it at least to become a great regional power, if not a world power. Boundaries of nations also play an important role in geographical situations. India has a geographical position through which it has a direct relation with its seven neighbours – Afghanistan, Pakistan, China, Bhutan, Nepal, Burma and Bangladesh. With some other countries like Sri Lanka, Malaysia, Indonesia, Maldives, etc., it has a close maritime boundary. India is facing pressure on its foreign relations since beginning due to the disputes arising out of the boundaries controversies. This problem erupted mainly in India-Pakistan, India-China and India-Bangladesh context. So here it becomes necessary to analyze these problems. Since their birth, India and Pakistan have tense relations as a result of accession and partition of Kashmir. India and Pakistan have fought three wars and one warlike dangerous situation in 1999 at Kargil. Also, India-China border has always been a source of dispute and finally resulted in India-China war in 1962. Boundary and distribution of water resources have been the main sources of disputes between India and Bangladesh. Apart from above three borders, we cannot deny the possibility of border disputes in future between India-Nepal, India-Bhutan, India-Burma and maritime border disputes between India-Sri Lanka, India-Malaysia and India-Indonesia etc. Hence, it is clear that geographical situations determined by boundaries between the countries play important role in the formulation and determination of foreign policy. Economic Development After security and sovereignty, economic development has a main contribution in the foreign policy of a nation, and India is no exception in this regard. After independence, where national security, sovereignty, unity and integrity of India have been important on the one hand, economic development on the other hand has also been an important aspect in international relations. Economic aspect is also taken into consideration while formulating the foreign policy. Hence, economic development has always been an important aspect of India's foreign policy. According to J. Bandopadhyay, its impact can be evaluated through the study of three main key points. These are national power capability, development techniques and diplomacy of development. The detailed study of these three factors throw lights on the impact on foreign policy. National Power Capability There are three factors to know the national power capability of a nation. Population, natural resources and technical knowledge. Population is the first main factor having an important impact on foreign policy of a nation. In Indian context, larger size of population bears an important influence. Its larger population has become a burden for it rather than be useful. Consequently, its foreign policy has remained under crisis. Availability of natural resources is the second main factor in increasing the national power capability. But this factor alone cannot influence the foreign policy of a nation. It needs capital, labor, organized techniques, social values, etc. along with natural resources. The combination of both of these is available in India. So India has signed various agreements time to time with different countries for optimum use of these natural resources. Technical knowledge is the third main factor responsible for increase in the national power capability. Today, all the countries of the world have to be dependent on each other to get the technical knowledge for their development. Development techniques Different development techniques are adopted in different ideologies and systems. In Indian context, development technique works under three main limitations. These are constitution, role of state and ideology of economic development. As far as constitution is concerned, India has adopted democratic system along with problems arising out of it. India wants to achieve development under this system in the short term. 
so it wants to regulate the resources in such a way that there should not be any danger to the fundamental rights of individual liberty in this direction neither the necessity of too much foreign assistance and dependence is denied nor can a large portion of internal resources by a nation either for today or tomorrow be spared for military investment hence the only nature has changed but demand for external assistance is still continued in india after the independence and this has pressurized india's foreign policy time to time role of state is the second main limitation to the development techniques adopted by a nation for economic development india had to develop itself economically in a time when two ideologies capitalism and communism were fully propagated and expanded hence india was in search of such an ideology through which it can develop itself independently by keeping the limitations of both the ideologies in view so india has to determine its foreign policy in context of both these ideologies where on the one side it can maintain coordination between development and justice development and equality development and national honor and on other side it can execute the mixed economy successfully selection of ideology for economic development is the third main limitation in this regard it has influenced both the established view of india in international context and its relations with great powers if india favored the democratic setup after independence during the whole period of cold war it was only due to the fact that india wanted to get benefit of cooperation from both the superpowers of that time adoption of policies of openness in economy and liberalization after 1991 were the results of changed international environment diplomacy of development indian diplomacy is determined by keeping in view the short term and long term objectives of development in this context indian economy has been influenced by security foreign aid and foreign trade Security of nation is an important investment of India's foreign policy. When we talk about security, we mean protection of regional as well as internal integrity, political and economic system and sovereignty. A country like India cannot allocate more than 4 to 5% of its GNP on its military system. Hence its security from China Pakistan and other great powers is not possible through military means only it has to use its diplomacy also modern world is the world of interdependence in this context the situation of a developing country like india is miserable it is in dire need of foreign aid for its development india should keep in mind its national sovereignty it is necessary that sources of aid should be numerous because complete dependence on a single country could be dangerous at any time in modern circumstances india should establish its relations with more and more trade oriented countries it is a proven fact that economic aid is not possible for a long time and without hurdles so trade is the best means of political self dependence of a country hence first india should conduct its foreign trade in different directions like with great powers china japan neighboring countries and southeast second the whole trade is not possible through roads so sea routes particularly the route of suez canal in west and strait of malacca routes in east through indian ocean should be adopted third where there is no possibility of bilateral trade talks it should be dependent on multilateral trade talk india has conducted its trade relations on these three factors since independence political traditions the foreign policy of a nation is highly influenced by its political history and traditions and this is more suitable for a country like india because it has its own unique culture and a long history of freedom movement whose influence is clearly visible in india j bandopadhyay also analyzes the influence of indian political traditions in context of five elements these are ideal thought of politics and power idealistic view of international politics opposition to apartheid and imperialism capitalist to western system and opposition to communism if we see the near past of our culture and analyze the national movement all the things will be clearly visualized 
development of indian culture and civilization has always been based on the principle of of vasudhaiva kutumbakam india has been a strong critic of apartheid and imperialism even before the independence because india has experienced these evils for a long time under british empire influence of gandhian philosophy on foreign policy is also clearly visible the policy of panchil is an apparent example of maintaining the relations on this basis among the nations in the changing scenario some other ideologies also influenced the foreign policy of india chief among them are marxism democratic socialism and realism hence political traditions not only influence the foreign policy of some early decades of the independence but they have demonstrated their behavior also the impact of not only ancient traditions but of current political ideologies and circumstances is also clearly visible on determination of india's foreign policy domestic environment there is a close relation between domestic environment and foreign policy of a country the impact of domestic environment on india's foreign policy is clearly visualized through the studies of elite ruling class nation building process party structure pressure groups and public opinion hence in present context foreign policy will acquire new directions through the coordination among political elites military and bureaucracy though in a parliamentary system like india the decisions on foreign policy are taken formally by ruling party in parliament but opposition parties also influence these decisions in a very strong manner sometimes the ruling party in itself lacks general consensus in multi party system it becomes necessary for a reasonable foreign policy to be based on general consensus the formulation of coalition government so many times in last two decades and the formation of minority governments at center has been the main reason of this in early years that is from 1941 to 67 the reason of following the foreign policy based on general consensus has been the values of national movement and one party domination system of congress but in later years polarization of above mentioned politics has influenced the nature of foreign policy there is lack of particular studies on the influence of pressure groups on india's foreign policy role of pressure groups in indian political system is not like that of america and other developed countries but it is in its early stage so there are no possibilities of having enough influence on foreign policy also but the role of business pressure groups like fiicci and cii has increased after 1991 due to the liberalization globalization and privatization of the business some other ngos friendly associations and mncs are also active in the formulation process of india's economic foreign policy public opinion also exerts influence on foreign policy but it has less impact it may be because of three reasons backwardness of indian public in various fields very few information about foreign policy and lack of means of communication with people the main weakness in this context is to evaluate the public opinion the function is performed in india by institution of indian public opinion but in a very limited manner there is a need to make it logical and credible partially this function is performed by newspaper editorials debates of parliament and public speeches but we can't be completely confident about the neutrality and objectivity of these mediums military capability military capability has an important place in the determination of the foreign policy of a country but two things must be taken into consideration in this context first military capability is not an independent element in itself but it depends on economic position of a nation second military power as an authoritative element is important and necessary for great powers but it is not so in case of a developing country like india its main reason is that india cannot play a strong role on the basis of its military power in the world in context of great powers but it has to be dependent on diplomacy up to a large extent 
but it does not mean that military capability has no place in india's foreign policy in the changing global milieu of today where peace establishing has become a difficult task it becomes necessary for india to keep sufficient military to secure its national boundaries national character up to which extent national character influences the foreign policy is a matter of dispute some scholars believe in the utility of national character but some other scholars don't believe in this view in fact when we study the national character as an input for the foreign policy it should be based on the approaches of decision makers ambassadors international observers or representatives along with criticism and realism in indian context when we talk about this factor we have to understand the basic aspects of indian culture hence the ideas approaches criticism etc coming out of main currents of culture of any country are reflected through the ideas of policy makers ambassadors representatives and through international issues and conferences personality except in the case of some individual dictators it is very difficult to establish the individual contribution of policy makers in policy determination in democratic systems it is true that in some democratic systems if prime minister is politically very strong or having charismatic personality he or she plays an important role in foreign policy beside this if prime minister is politically weak and foreign minister is an important leader in itself he or she can convert the foreign policy according to national interest india's foreign policy has been influenced basically by the personality of nehru and up to some extent by indira gandhi lal bahadur shastri rajiv gandhi pv narsimha rao indra kumar gujral atal bihari vajpayee and manmohan singh have limited influence on india's foreign policy while vp singh chandrashekhar and dev gowda have negligible the individual influence of nehru has been due to his role in the congress after nehru india's personality exerted a special influence on india's foreign policy though five foreign ministers have took the responsibilities of foreign policy during the first tenure of indira gandhi but all those could not influence the decisions of indira gandhi lal bahadur shastri was not aware about the practice of foreign policy like nehru and india and indira because his background and environment was quite different from both of them but his contribution regarding foreign policy during his limited tenure of one and a half years has been appreciable this role of shastri was not individual based but he was in favor of such institutional development of foreign policy even after his limited experience that foreign policy should be formulated under more logical and clear structure or system so that it can be based on long term vision two things were definitely new about the leadership of rajiv gandhi he was the product of post independence generation and he was not clearly associated with any particular ideology he was more close to western culture due to his education lifestyle and marriage and definitely his foreign policy was based on world context of nehru and regional dominance of indira governments of vp singh and chandrashekhar could not perform well due to their short terms both the governments could not pay, pay more attention towards this due to their domestic problems The world was witnessing the phase of unimaginable turbulence during the tenure of Narasimha Rao. The internal economic situation also went very critical. Hence, the process of economic reforms was initiated as a result of internal economic pressures and disintegration of USSR. Consequently, some decisions regarding foreign policy were taken like cooperation with America, Look East policy, open market system, joining WTO, etc. But in all these changes, circumstances played more role than individuals. Dev Gowda also lacked the individual influence on foreign policy. There has been a clear influence of Gujarat's personality on India's foreign policy. Though his term was also very limited and he has been a supporter of foreign policies of Nehru and Indira Gandhi but he exerted his individual influence in context of changed world where on one hand he maintained a continuity of India's position on its nuclear policy at the same time on the other hand he propounded the Gujarat doctrine in context of neighboring countries 
Through this doctrine, India is in favor of maintaining good relations with neighbors by giving them one-sided exemptions. Individual influence of Atal Bihari Vajpayee was also visible in determination of foreign policy, but some pressure of his party's ideology is also visible at the same time. Influence of Prime Minister Manmohan Singh on foreign policy can be visualized in the context of his policies of liberalization. And currently, the Prime Minister Modi is steering the foreign policy of India through his ambitious project Make in India. He seems to have a personal impact on the execution of India's foreign policy. External factors, regional environment. The incidents in nearby regions necessarily have a direct influence on the foreign policy of India. Mutual relations of South Asian countries, reduction of tension in this region, free from weapons and military alliances, free from outside interventions will have positive impact while non-cooperation, competition, struggle and cold war will have negative impact on foreign policy. From this point of view, the role in determining the India's foreign policy can be evaluated under the following old and new cooperation and conflict of South Asia. Boundary disputes of India with China and Pakistan The second most important element India got from its neighbors in legacy is an ethnicity problem. India and Sri Lanka are fighting with the problem of Tamil people since their independence. The same problem is there due to the refugees of India and Bangladesh. The Chakma refugees of Bangladesh have created a situation of serious crisis in Tripura. One more important problem is associated with the attitude of small neighbors towards India. Area, population, military capability, economic changes, etc. of India are the symbols of fear for its small neighbors. Its neighbors, particularly small nations, see these elements as a power of India to dominate the South Asia. Treaties and agreements by India with these countries time to time have created a doubt in these countries towards the policies of India for these countries. Beside this, two steps taken by India in near past, sending of peace forces in Sri Lanka and military intervention in Maldives have also proved more clearly India's image of a country having a regional dominance. The production and use of missiles named Prithvi, Agni, Akash, Nag and Trishul under the Integrated Guided Missile Development Program started in 1983, have also strengthened their perception about India as a power of military intervention. Along with the above negative attitude about India, there has been some positive functions also. All these nations have strengthened the position of SARC together. On one side, they have prepared a code of conduct for consensus on some matters mutually for all the nations through various conferences and on the other side, they got important achievements in the economic field. But it does not mean that regional environment is in favor of India. There are still many important issues. International environment. International political environment is directly associated with the international role of a nation. If this environment is according to the situations of a country, it can play sounder role on international fronts platforms. If the environment is against, then such possibilities become nil. In Indian context, the importance of this factor can be studied in two parts. Cold War period and post Cold War period. Cold War period. As a result of Cold War, the era of military alliances started. In this context, the multilateral alliances by America like Seattle, NATO and bilateral alliances like America Park Military Alliance are worth mentioning. But India wanted to follow the non-aligned policy. India was not interested in joining any group and wanted to examine every issue on the basis of its merits and demerits. But both the superpowers took it in a wrong way in the environment of Cold War and assumed the India's foreign policy doubtful. That's why India has to face a tough struggle and a position of great powers while justifying its policy of non-alignment. 
second important event was the militarization of indian ocean america militarized the whole area by converting the diego garcia as a military base which caused the danger to the sovereignty and security of newly emerged nations of indian ocean as a result the un declared this region as indian ocean peace zone in 1971 on the initiative of these newly emerged nations but it could not be actualized till date because of the opposition of the great powers all these activities around india became a source of tension for it hence india will have to struggle tough to liberate this region strategically from the conflict of superpowers because every event happened in this region was having a direct bearing on india's security and sovereignty one more important event was the india soviet friendship of 1971 This treaty was signed in August 1971 on the basis of compulsions of both the countries but basically former Soviet Union wanted this kind of alliance with India under Brezhnev's thinking of collective security in Asia which was rejected humbly by India but it became necessary keeping in view the entry of refugees from East Pakistan in 1971 and emerging disputes between both parts of Pakistan Beside this, the encirclement of India and erstwhile Soviet Union, resulting from the developing alignments of Washington, Islamabad, Beijing, and Tokyo, has also been responsible for bringing India and Soviet Union closer. As a result of this, India-America relations got deteriorated, while Pak-America relations became good. Though this kind of relations remained stable for some time, when the Tanth was witnessed between superpowers. But then new cold war started as a result of Soviet Afghan intervention in 1979 and the earlier situation was restored no special change was witnessed in this situation due to the cold war and india's foreign policy received a setback while establishing the relations with western countries during the cold war particularly after 1970 nuclear proliferation has also influenced India's foreign policy in a big way the execution of nuclear non proliferation treaty in 1971 and India's refusal to sign it is a main cause of pressure of nuclear power on India post cold war period though cold war ended as a result of events in europe and disintegration of soviet union in 1991 but still a justifiable world system based on equality and sovereignty for all nations has not been established hence the negative and positive aspects of india's foreign policy with same nature or changed still exist one chapter particularly of friendship and treaties which continued for a longer time finished with the disintegration of soviet union in the post cold war era there is a situation of detente in the world in general and in the bilateral relations in particular in this tension free environment where on one side the peace is established in cambodia and palestine there is unification of germany also on the other side this process is hindered in korea due to some reasons but india and pakistan have not changed their earlier stance in any way end of significance to political issues and preferences to economic issues is an important change in this new world system economically sound countries are becoming centers of main activities hence the direction of foreign policy is decided by international trade capital investment liberalization globalization expansion of means of communications important role of multinational companies economic reforms etc india also has to make basic changes in its foreign policy in this changed scenario after the cold war era india's foreign policy now has started taking special interest in the long ignored sector hence the foreign policy after 1991 can be termed as stress toward east under this the main attraction of india's foreign policy is southeast asia along with japan taiwan korea etc this region under the new world system has become most important for india due to the strategic trade and political reasons international organizations transformation of world through international organizations has a direct relation with india's foreign policy 
if we see the political traditions of india we will come to know that these have been in favor of establishing a peaceful non violent and equitable world structure beside this there is coordination between the values of india's freedom movement and the objectives of united nations india has been a continuous partner in the activities of international organizations in the context of its national interest and has always been in a leading role though india tried always to play a neutral and objective role in un but great powers opposed this and denied many times to discuss the important issues raised by india by saying that india is a satellite state above situation continued in post cold war era also only the issues of debate have changed the gulf war has posed the question mark on un beside this it is now open that use of part 7 of un is increasing instead of part 6 it means security council has become more important than general assembly hence the demand for democratization of security council raised by india is justified and sound but it looks impossible to attract the attention of five permanent members having veto power towards this issue now to conclude this module we can say that indian foreign policy is determined by certain factors and principles as discussed there are certain internal factors as well as external factors apart from it there are certain human and non human factors which directly impact the foreign policy of india these determinants are always in interplay with each other so we cannot generalize which factor is more important however india has been a victim of colonialism since long and india is still evolving with its foreign policy however the efforts of indian foreign policy are still very much good thank you